Good evening. It's November 13th, 2017. It's 7 p.m. I'm Gary Rakes, President of the Speedway Town Council. I'd like to welcome all those in attendance and those watching at home uh, to the uh, first meeting of the month for the Speedway Town Council. Uh, go ahead and introduce uh, those at, at uh, the table this evening and go ahead and move forward with our agenda. Uh, to my uh, far right is Councillor uh, Eileen Fisher. Good evening. My immediate right is Vice President of Council Jeff Matthews. Good evening. To my left is Dave Lindsay, also a counselor. Good evening. Jacob Blaisdell is to his left. He's our town manager. Good evening, Speedway. Monty Combs is our, t our clerk treasurer, and he's to the left as well. Good evening. And Good evening. Bob Clutter, uh, our town attorney. Good evening. So with uh, no further ado, I'd <coughs> like to encourage everyone to stand and recite the pledge with us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First couple of items on the agenda are approval of Town Council meeting minutes from October 23rd. And the second one is a mem memorandum of an executive session that same date, October 23rd. These have been distributed to the council previous to the meeting. Are there any changes to either one of those? Any comments? We'll go ahead and accept those uh, as distributed. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, Citizen of the Month for November. Connie, would you come forward and present your Citizen of the Month? Our Citizen of the Month. Right. Um, just for those of you that don't know that the Town of Speedway and the Speedway Chamber of Commerce partner together to present um, a certificate and a gift certificate to a person that have been nominated from someone in our community. Um, the November Citizen of the Month goes to Ron Fisher, and we, he was nominated to recognize his volunteer work with the Speedway Lions Club for many years, 11 years on the Speedway Redevelopment Commission, and for his commitment to Fuller Center and especially the Full, Fuller Center builds in Speedway. So I know that he was responsible for three houses, I believe. So he's been nominated or involved with three houses with Allison Transmission. So on behalf of the chamber and you guys, the town, um, I'd like to present this certificate to Ron. Thank you. And I'd like, can someone stand up and I'll take a picture of you guys? Eileen, you want to stand with it? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> she said, do I have to? <laughs> Stop. Okay, ready? Look at me first and then Gary can get you guys. Okay. Thank you. There's some flags right behind you there, guys. We'll uh, get a little. Thank you. And I've got the good stuff here. I know, it's a, gift, a gift card to Foyt Wine Ball. So. Thank you. Ron, hold on just a second. Uh, thanks, Connie, for that. Um, I'll make a real simple comment. Uh, I serve with you on a Fuller Center for Housing. I do very little. You do a lot. And you've been working with Fuller and previous to that the Habitat, which Fuller was birthed out of Habitat. And that, that alone um, is, is enough for you to be recognized. And I, I work beside you. I've seen the, the things that you do to change people's lives, specifically uh, in, in Three cases that I know of single moms with kids in our system, or kids that were about to be in our system that now are in our system, that you've absolutely changed their lives. And there's other people that work beside you. You've, but you go out and you get a, an Allison transmission or you go get folks involved in racing to, to, do, uh, to just give their time. And um, you give it right with them. And then when we get to the end of that process, we hand the keys over to a family and we huddle around them. And uh, you're in the background. You don't come forward to be seen. Uh, and I thank you for that. Uh, it's, I know you've done it all over the world, but uh, if you want to make some comments on that alone, I mean, just I, some other counselors here, I'm sure, want to say some other things. But thank you for the work you do. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate this this honor, and but I love this town, and I love to get back to this town, and uh, I just don't want to see anybody hurt. Uh, and I think the f there's three families on 10th, and plus the home at 20th and Allison. Uh, those families are on, all in a warm place tonight, and uh, so I'm very proud of that. But also, it's not because of me; it's because uh, being directed by the Lord. So, I thank you. Thanks, Ron. Ron. 
How many homes do you think you built <coughs> around the world, around the country? I remember years ago you went to Shreveport during the hurricanes. I mean, how many oh. homes do you think you built? Just guess. I'd rather say how many children I've helped. All right. It's how many? over 600 children, and uh, and that's to know around the world that those kids are in good, decent, affordable homes tonight. That that makes you feel that you have a nice spirit. Uh, at least you can go to bed at night knowing that you've helped other people, and so. Uh, and I've enjoyed it. it I, I've been blessed to have an opportunity to come from Hallville and go around the world and sit with the president, with him eight, eight year to, years. And but right here in Speedway has been the best. Uh, I really enjoyed doing the homes here in Speedway. This isn't the same as a home, but Ron called me two years ago about a garage for the mo motorcycles for the police department, and say he called me and said, "Dave, I've got an idea. I know the the mo the." Motorcycles, the police department needs some storage. They need some place to go. I think I want to do that. And Ron got the group together and cost the town nothing and got got, got that done thanks to Norm also for giving we some space up. We have a nice up. garage thanks to that. Yes. So, I mean, it's it, it's more than a house. It's more than just that. You've you've done a lot for the town, Ron. Thank you. Greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Matt. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to remind everybody that the Chamber has two more events coming up before the end of the year. November 30th at Delar IndyCar is our annual auction, and we it's open to everybody um, and the public as long as you're 21 and over. And that's how we raise our funds to put on community events for free. We really try to do trunk or treat, light the night, everything for free. And then light the night on Main, which is our holiday event, kind of kicking off the holidays for the Town of Speedway is December 7th. And that is from 6 to 8. And I understand Santa is going to get a ride from Sarah Fisher in an IndyCar. So you can line the streets and see that. And then we've got a lot of fun activities, choirs. You can make reindeer food, ornaments, um, see Santa, write letters, get balloons made. Um, and that's all free. So that's December 7th at Delar IndyCar Factory. Is Sarah doing that so that her kids will get good presents from Santa? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, um, just want to remind everybody about those two events. Thank you. Thanks, Con. Um, so item five is a public hearing. It's, uh, the, it's regarding a grant proposal for the wastewater treatment facility. It's, uh, it's actually a public hearing. Um, do maybe just take a moment to introduce what this is, and then we'll, we'll call, the, call the hearing if you want to do that. And maybe leave a little bit to, to discuss during that hearing, <laughs> if you would, please. Of course. Uh, yeah, so we are uh, applying for a grant with through OCRA. Um, to make various investments in our wastewater treatment plant. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and um, as you said, we need to hold, hold a public hearing uh, technically to, to apply for the grant. <clears throat> Most people don't have a problem with us applying to get money uh, that, that they otherwise don't need to spend on the plant. Um, but nevertheless, it's kind of a box we need to check to, to go through the process. So um, uh, at a high level, uh, we are going to be installing new grip pumps. Uh, we are going to be improving and replacing pumps, motors, controls in the return activated sludge building. Maybe I should have said this first. If you're like at home watching and uh, eating dinner now, maybe just uh, <laughs> t turn the channel for a second. Um, so there's, uh, we're also going to be uh, replacing a fine screen and motor, uh, which is a process at the beginning uh, that filters out garbage. Um, uh, replacing a, a digester boiler. Um, rehabilitating the north and south primary clarifier tanks. We have a couple of uh, above ground tanks that uh, have some structural issues that we need to, to make significant repairs to. Um, and um, rehabilitating the grit chamber tank as well as a garage that uh, needs work on it. So I think I ticked off the list of uh, everything that's going on. It's, it's uh, a lot of projects, but all of them are, are needed uh, investments. And if we can uh, attract some grant dollars, as, as we have in other areas in town, uh, we're, we're looking to do so. Um, so with that, I think it would make sense to uh, go yeah. ahead and open up yeah. for public so it's, comment. Yeah, so it's uh, 7.15, and I'll call the, um, the meeting to order. Uh, you know what? It's, I'm looking at a clock on the back wall that says 7.15, but I'm looking at a phone that says 7.09. So we'll use 7.09 because I think this, the phone is accurate and the clock on the back wall must not be. So uh, with that, I'm calling a public hearing for the uh, CDBG grant proposal for wastewater treatment plant. 
Good evening. My name is Mike Kleinpeter. I'm with Kleinpeter Consulting Group, and I'm the grant administrator for the project. Uh, OGRE requires that I read about three or four bullet points, so just bear with me. The uh, purpose for the hearing tonight is to discuss the town's application for grant funding through the Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs. We're applying specifically for a wastewater drinking grant in the amount of $500,000. We'll be contributing a local match of $478,000. The first step is for us to submit a proposal, which is due <coughs> December 1st. <clears throat> After that, Susie Ripley, our community liaison, and other OCRA staff will review it. They'll have a site visit in December. Uh, our application is going to be due February 9th. We want to make sure the citizens of the town are fully informed and have the opportunity to voice any concerns or support for the project. Funds available for the program are limited. It is competitive. Uh, if the town is successful with their application, award announcements will be in April of 2018. <coughs> Jacob gave you a quick overview of the project and things we're going to do. So with that, we can open the public hearing. Thank you. So uh, those that uh, signed the petition uh, to, to speak would now have the opportunity to come forward and speak on this topic. Good evening, Norm Berry. I'm the wastewater superintendent for the town of Speedway. I think, needless to say, I'm uh, definitely in favor of this uh, grant application. Uh, just to mention a couple of things, um, the reason that we're going after the grant is that we just have we have so much equipment and infrastructure in the treatment plant that's anywhere from 40 to 60 years old, and that definitely need attention. Um, if we were successful in obtaining this grant, this means that we won't have to use current funds that are in our sewer operating fund to make these repairs. Um, and that will give us a chance to maybe appropriate some of those dollars in other areas within the town, in particular our infrastructure, which continues to deteriorate the underground infrastructure collection systems. Um, in addition to the the equipment and infra infrastructure that has aged over the years, uh, we also have some equipment that's just not efficient anymore. Um, hard to get parts um, and just inefficient to operate. So I would, I would like to uh, encourage the public to uh, show their support and to come out uh, at the next public hearing <coughs> and um, uh, help us uh, hopefully obtain this grant. Thank you. Any other public comments or staff comments? Any council comments on this? Okay. It is um, 713. I'll call the public hearing closed and uh, we can move forward with other discussion uh, on this grant proposal. I know that. Okay. Um, so we've, we've, um, I believe I'll check with uh, Mike, but uh, does this, have we met the uh, requirements and needs for the open hearing? Yeah, so that's the first step. Uh, the next step will be for us to submit our proposal. And I gave you a packet here tonight that needed some signatures. Now, it doesn't have to be today. If you can do those tomorrow or, and get those packaged to me, then I'll submit our proposal for December 1st. And then next step will be a site visit, um, probably sometime mid-December. As soon as I know that date, I'll let you guys know, and you're welcome to attend if you would like. And that's it. Is there a sign-in sheet going around up there? Yes. I'm going to grab that if you don't mind. And so this, uh, just to clarify, uh, the grant proposal doesn't require council um, approval, or does it? Yes, yeah, so council will need to pass a resolution at probably the January council meeting. Um, at this stage, it does not require that's what I meant. Uh, a resolution, but in January, we will Great. need to pass that. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think we're good to uh, to move on to the next item, which actually still involves Mike. Uh, I know that uh, Mike doesn't necessarily have to come forward for this, but uh, the fact that he's here, uh, Jacob, you want to present this? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as we're applying for the grant, of course, these are complicated. There's a lot of work that goes into it and effort. Um, so we would like to enter into a contract for um, Mike Kleinpeter to, to do the grant administration work. Um, he is a former employee of OCRA and has... Um, had a lot of success and um, has been very helpful in the process thus far and uh, we'd like to continue working with them uh, to move this project forward. Okay. Do I hear a motion? Mr. 
President, I make a motion that we accept the uh, agreement with Mr. Kleinpepper for the consulting. Second. We have a motion to approve the agreement with uh, Klein Peter Consulting Group LLC. Any uh, any public comments regarding this? Any council comments? I'll go ahead and call for the vote. All those in favor of approving the agreement uh, as presented, say aye. 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 Opposed. This carries four zero. And moving on to uh, next item, a placement of a historical marker on Main Street. Yes, Mr. President. Um, very early on when I became town manager, um, I had somebody approach me uh, asking about putting a state historic marker on Main Street for a facility that, that I didn't know had ever existed uh, within the town of Speedway. Uh, way back during World War I, <coughs> there was a, uh, an aviation repair depot that was right on Main Street. It uh, is located, and I, I didn't get cable the, uh, the map. I don't know if you can put one up there and we can get it, uh, get it on the screen up there. But um, uh, north of what's now the B&O Trail uh, that we've already paved, and then um, north of that, sort of nor even north of Gilman, uh, was an aviation repair depot. And um, it... Planes that had been damaged, there you can see the map, planes that had been damaged would come along on the rail line of the B&O Trail. They would go into the repair depot, and then they would be fixed, and then they would drag the planes up Main Street, and then they would take off uh, inside of the motor speedway. And um, really neat piece of history on Main Street, of course. Uh, there's plenty of uh, automotive history within the town, but this is kind of a neat, um, a neat facility that existed and uh, there's not a whole lot of World War I markers in general. Um, so really neat that we have this in the town, so we look forward to highlighting it. And uh, this is a proposal to place the, um, place the marker at what, what now is kind of a bit of a trailhead on, on the B&O Trail, kind of along Main Street on the uh, east side of Main Street. And uh, <laughs> effectively looking, you'd be looking north, east at where the site was as you're looking at the sign. So, uh, we'd like to place it there. It's right on the corner of the facility, and um, and we just think it makes a lot of sense. There's also a um, proposal. We'll, we'll probably put some benches and, and that bike racks and that sort of thing um, along Main Street as it's along the trail. But really neat location, and um, uh, right across the street from where we, we plan on putting the, the Speedway War Memorial um, in front of the IPL building. So it's, uh, it's a really neat project. Like I said, I, I uh, got to learn a little bit of history. Um, thankful for, for Rolls Royce is going to be donating uh, all the costs to put the sign in, and then uh, the town will be donating our talent and labor to get it installed. We uh, don't have a plan yet on uh, when it would be dedicated. They they want, I guess the anniversary would be uh, in April. That's a little bit quick. Um, I've also propose maybe we could do it sometime during the Red Bull Air Race, uh, tying in the, the mm -hmm. aviation uh, history with the Motor Speedway. But that is the date is to be determined. But um, after we find the location, they'll send all the information to the state, and then we'll be, we'll be set to go. Great. So uh, we need a motion, and then we can talk about it. Mr. President, I move that we approve the placement of the Indiana Historical State Marker on Main Street. Second. We have a motion to place the historical marker. Uh, any comments from the council? Questions? My comment would be that I love it. Um, the history is something that we, we've we done, uh, I was going to say more better. I don't think it's proper English. <laughs> <laughs> we've done uh, increasingly better uh, over the years. Uh, that whole area is a historical district. Uh, it received national attention, uh, recognition for that. Uh, the War Memorial, it all ties together, and I think it's great. Um, and the placards that we have uh, down uh, to the north or up to the north, uh, the original Allison engine uh, location, and then on the, the other trail where we recognized uh, um, A.J. Watson is another terrific marker, and then there's one near the uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway as well. Um, I believe there is uh, near the roundabout. They're just th these... It's art, and it's uh, 
it's the best kind of art. It's historical, and from my perspective, so I'm, I'm all for this and excited about it. No other comments. I'll go ahead and call for the vote. All those in favor of approving the historical marker to be placed on May Street, uh, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Carries four zero. Dave, uh, you, I was you just going to say exactly what you were. I was just going to say exactly what you were going to say. So <laughs> <laughs> word for word, pretty much. It's uncanny. Yeah. Amazing. We're flying right, right along now. Oh boy. <laughs> Don't encourage that. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Uh, so the report from our town manager or town supervisors is next. We'll start with Tim Gropp, Economic Development. Good evening, Town Council. Uh, it was a very hectic, crazy week last week for the uh, Redevelopment um, Commission. Uh, if you have not heard yet, we did officially close <coughs> after uh, you know, around two years on the Wilshaw project. So. Uh, we want to make it very clear that that lot at um, 16th and Main, 15th and Main, is no longer open to the public. It is closed off with uh, barricades right now. It, they'll uh, they'll um, actually be mobilizing here. They brought out equipment today, so um, they'll be you'll see some construction going. They're starting to survey and do some different things there. So that lot is under construction, which obviously changes everything about down uh, Main Street's parking so um, we are working with the down the Main Street business owners we are uh, um, handling issues as they come up it's obviously going to be a learning curve we're gonna have to see what issues arise uh, we do have a plan in place uh, we have secured parking uh, on several lots um, I'll get to that in just a second uh, for employee parking to get the employees dedicated spots a little bit away a block or two away from from their um, businesses in order to open up the main street parking and the side parking for patrons to make sure that those lot those spaces are turning over and that we're able to park as many patrons as possible it's it's about the people coming to our main street businesses having a place to park a convenient place to park so they'll come back so we're doing our best to do that it's not perfect at this moment but we are uh, working through there uh, up on the graphic there this is the most up-to-date parking map we have pushed this out via the town of Speedway app if you don't have it download it um, so this will be updated uh, this will also go out to business owners to be able to distribute to their patrons and uh, we also push it out on social media it will be on our websites uh, as much as we can we encourage anybody to get this map out there are approximately and these aren't <coughs> perfect numbers there's approximately two when we say parking map this is the 1300 block north to 16th street that is the area that's really going to be affected the most there's obviously um, uh, another part of main street but um, we want to make sure we get this message out that there are there's approximately 240 public spots in this area we've secured about 65 um, permit spots that we've been handing out there's a few of the smaller businesses that have requested permits we'll be getting those out this week as well keeping track of that so we encourage the businesses to have their employees park in those permitted lots uh, we will continue to adjust things as needed uh, if you have not been on down on Main Street today uh, the building at 13 46 the <coughs> gas station has been torn down it's in a big pile there right now it's not gone but in the next couple of days it will be um, well there you go I we provided a picture of it going down today so um, we will finish that up next few days they will be pulling out there's a lift tank in there that needs to come out and then we'll be backfilling that uh, at the same time uh, we also closed on 1330 Main the former uh, Linder um, ignition building uh, as, including the building behind uh, that one as well so that is officially done now we are that is one of our permit parking lots uh, they will be coming out globe paving will be coming out they won the contract the SRC has awarded that bid they will be grading out that lot starting uh, I believe tomorrow uh, sometime this week um, and then uh, hopefully paving in the next week week and a half uh, getting that lot ready as soon as they're done with that this 1346 lot should be ready to pave and they'll get that done the 1346 lot um, will be patron parking it'll add about it'll have about 14 spots in it uh, they have started construction on the lot behind uh, barbecue and bourbon 
Um, they, they have to go back and change a few things, but that'll be a 12 to 14 spots when it's all done as well. And then we are starting the process on the demolition of 1426, which is the former family physician's building. Uh, we have to get the utilities disconnected yet, and then there's some panels that need to be removed on the front before demolition can happen. So all that is in process. Uh, we're clearing out the 1426 building now that we have a spot to put everything. Um, we're hoping that building will, will be the end of the month here. By the time that gets down, that'll add another 12 to 14 spots in that block as well. So we're making progress. We know it's going to be a, a challenge here, but we're, we're uh, working towards trying to make it as convenient as possible. Be happy to answer any questions the council might have on this transition time. Tim, do you have a plan if the um, asphalt's not down and before the shop's closed? Yeah, we're, we're right on the edge. Typically, depending on how the weather goes, Thanksgiving's kind of your rule of thumb. So if we miss it, it'll just have to be gravel uh, until this till the springtime when the plants open back up. We're trying desperately to get as much of it. We might miss it on 1426. I think we're going to be okay on both 1330 and 1346 to get the asphalt down. Um, and also, I believe, um, if we can get everything moving, that the... Uh, barbecue and bourbon lot should be okay too so hopefully the only one that would maybe come close to that is 1426 and that'd just be gravel until the springtime as soon as it opened up we'd get that paved as well and but four, i'm sorry go ahead will you mark that gravel so that you don't lose any spots and things we'll do our best obviously if you have to plow it a lot that'll with gravel that'll mess it up a little bit but um wendell's crew and and rob's crew have been great um helping us out through all this I should also note we've added some additional signage down there. However, there's probably going to be some additional signage tweaking it to get it right to make sure people understand that there's available parking in certain spots. So, uh, for instance, 1346, when we get that lot done, we want to make sure, again, it's turnover patron parking. So we'll, we'll work with uh, to make sure we have that sign correct so that we can uh, people know they can park there. Uh, we've done the same thing with the lot next to USAC that we own, the, the Will, we call it the Wilcox lot, but uh, parking for Wilshaw during the day. That lot is open to the public after 6 p.m. and all weekend. So there's, there's about 20 spots in there. So please utilize it. We like to see it full. So. Yeah. 1426, just so that we're clear, uh, the former family physicians that's going to be public parking correct that'll be public parking okay. uh, right in the center of that block and that's the block that really needs the extra parking so uh, that'll be public parking 1330 will be the permit parking uh, I'd also just like to recognize um, uh, Conkle Funeral Home and Ed Carpenter Racing who has given us uh, parking spots on their lots uh, free of charge to allow uh, businesses to park there via permit in the interim uh, Ed Carpenter till the end of the year till we get 1330 open but both of them uh, stepped up and, and helped the town out and we appreciate the effort. To be clear those are permit parking only for employees <laughs> of the businesses. Yes those are permit parking only we do have to control those lots for who's there and and the businesses have insured them but they were willing to give up some spots in order to help accommodate the downtown or the main street businesses. So. Yeah, I, I would add to that thank you to uh, folks like Dawson's Bourbon and Barbecue, some of the other businesses there that are, are working hard to get their employees to park in those dedicated spaces so that it uh, allows uh, their patrons, their customers, to have uh, street parking as close or closer to what they've had previously. Yep. And we absolutely encourage anybody to, you know, help us monitor and, yeah. and help us let us know of issues that we need to address because we want this to work and we know it's a big change. So if we need to reach out to somebody or we need to ask them to have their employee, you know, please have your employees move, uh, we will do that to make this as, as uh, convenient as possible for Main Street businesses. Tim, I'd also say thank you to you. I know that you stepped into to, to this uh, situation and the parking committee that Jeff and myself and a couple of members of redevelopment, those same businesses that I mentioned a moment ago, uh, Dawson's and Bourbon and Barbecue, or Barbecue and Bourbon, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, another resident, Chris uh, Jones, that lives uh, along 15th Street. Just different folks that, that volunteered for that. Uh, a lot of the work, lots of hours of work that were put into that uh, are coming to fruition, uh, knowing that we had some options, and, and you you and the commission and others have worked hard to make those options come forward as well as some other things that are still in the works so thank yep. you for that 
Yeah, it's definitely been a busy time, so uh, we appreciate everybody working with us, and we'll continue to adjust as needed. Great. Anything else to report? Uh, progress on Bricksmore is going well. You know, TJ Maxx finished up last week, and they're putting walls up for the additional uh, three small box stores. Um, Courtyard by Marriott's going vertical. Get Go should open. I get at, asked every day when Get Go is officially opening. They're waiting on their final sign to come uh, come in. So they had some changes to it. It's it should be here any time. And as soon as that gets up and situated, there will be a formal an announcement for grand opening. So we'll definitely make sure we push that out as soon as we find out what that date is because we know there's been a lot of people asking. It's a technical question on that. Mm -hmm. um, they haven't opened it, but we've approved it everything from a permitting occupancy all those things so getting it on the records to make sure that we get revenues over time from that just want to be sure that happens this year so that it's payable in 2019 yeah so. everything's ready to go they could open today if they so choose so we have signed off they have their certificate of occupancy so so their um, delay is not going to prevent us from getting those tax revenues in no. 19 i just want to be sure of. no so we'll be thank fine you. They, and they shouldn't be that long before they open up. As long as they open by December 31st, there's really no worry. But that being said, it's already built in there, so we should be fine. That's the point. Thank you. So, all right. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Tim. Thanks. Uh, Police Chief Jim Campbell. Good evening. Uh, first of all, our eighth Citizens Academy graduation is this Wednesday. You know, it's hard to believe that we've had eight of them. Uh, over the course of the years, but you know, this is a small group. We had four or five that dropped out, all for good reason. But you know, it's been it's been a group that I think, by virtue of being smaller, they probably had some advantages to spend more time and do things, you know, with officers that they wouldn't have otherwise. Uh, Gary may not want me to mention this, but he also attended, you know, those classes and and. Uh, hopefully got some good insight. We have a couple of graduates of that class on the council, and that's a good thing. Uh, student Academy. There were 34 students in October who attended our Student Academy. You know, and I obviously could talk a long time about what the benefit of that is that I think helps both the department, the schools, and the community. Uh, Mark Jones has done a great job. Uh, that's one of the officers I had a hard time coming up with earlier today that's really 35 but Mark Mark does work really hard uh, to, to try to get those students you know to associate the police with good things you know we've got students at the high school wearing our sweatshirts and you know doing a lot of a lot of activities that uh, you know 34 of those kids is pretty impressive can't say enough Ken Halls I've keep saying is one of our best supporters uh, and this again is a true partnership with the police and, and the schools. Uh, shred it we had in October it's a little lower but we there was five thousand one hundred thirty four dollars you know that was taken in for crime stoppers. You know this one usually is a little lower but the part I couldn't understand the last two or three we've had it's poured rain the whole time they were out there this was a really pretty nice day, and it's a lower dollar amount. So I don't know if people stayed home cleaning or who knows. One of an interesting note that Norm's probably going to appreciate, but you know, the D, I read an article. The DEA, you know, have their take back similar to what we do on that day. Uh, and one of the recent ones, they had 456 tons of pharmaceuticals, you know, that were taken as part of that take back. And again, I think you know where that 456 tons would have gone, you know, did we not have those kinds of programs. And ours continues to be very successful. The last one is, and you'll probably see some bulletins, but, you know, Neighborhood Watch will be on the 30th. And, you know, it's this one actually has, besides the uh, Speedway officers, this one will have a deputy prosecutor there. You know, they'll talk about safety by design, burglary prevention. You know, I'd encourage anyone that has the time. Uh, you know, it, it'll be at the at the high school road 2950 Flanner and Buchanan. And, uh, you know, again, can't say enough for the fact that this is an opportunity to come out and hear from the prosecutor 
ask questions from, you know, the police department, and it starts at 7 p.m. That's what I got. Chief, thank you. Thanks. Next up is Fire Chief Bob Fishburn. Evening. Uh, first, wanted to talk a little bit about uh, month of October. We completed all of our fire prevention, getting in the schools, taking the uh, safety trailer. But we also participated this year with Praxair Safety Day, which was a rotation where we did fire extinguisher classes forums. Actually, one of the last things, one of the last days that Chief Lynch was here, he and our part-time inspector went over, and Nick works a lot with you know our our uh, corporate partners. <coughs> And so it was really good for him as a part-time employee who gets in their facility to help with that. So uh, we were, uh, that, that was really successful. They spent the day over there putting all their employees through those sorts of things. Um, I know Jacob let you know we have a new assistant chief. We're going to swear him in two weeks from tonight. We'll bring him before you and, and do a swearing in. I'll get with Monty on that. It's Chris Milhorn. He's a 12-year veteran of the fire department. Uh, has has done a lot of different roles shared some of those with uh, Jacob and I'll do that here in a couple weeks with Chief Lynch is leaving and and Christy Williams going to IFD leaves two openings so our Merit Commission had already certified a hiring list as a part of our process uh, I'm happy to say that Jacob Johnson who will be starting in the Academy in January passed his state required mandatory training test today which our guys put him through over at the tower I want to thank Wayne Township they didn't charge us a penny for taking him over there and Andy Harris and the uh, the training facility over there they're just always always really willing to help us out on those sorts of things um, we will be bringing on another uh, probationary firefighter in mid-December we hope to get him through his physical is psych through all perf stuff we're hoping that he and Jacob can go through the Academy together uh, IFD has has told us that they would make that available so they would start the fire school side of that Academy in mid-January we think that's gonna work which then gets them on the streets by May which is kind of a busy time for us so uh, and and that time of year is good for us overtime wise also so we're hoping to get them both in the academy at the same time. We'll be back to full strength come May. So I uh, also wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Coats for Kids program that last year was the first year. And uh, actually, it's Mark Jones, the, the officer in the schools, who, you know, he'd see kids coming to school with short sleeve shirts. And, you know, he was just looking for a way to to get them that and so I know the firefighters and police officers last year would just bring in things for kids adults there's junior high and senior high kids that need adult coats well last year Dave Howard at Praxair they were looking for a way to give back to the community so his entire safety team at Praxair is gonna for the second year they'll have a two-week period where they can bring in lightly used coats or brand new coats we put up a barrel in our hallway and Mark, uh, Mark was able to secure a coat rack. Teachers can submit names. It's, it's really a neat program. And uh, I really appreciate Mark asking us to participate last year. And we're going to do that again this year uh, with the help of Praxair. So uh, we've got three guys this week in the fire department training network over on the east side, sending them through a truck ops class. It's three gentlemen who didn't get to go. Last year, we'll send three more in January. That's all, our, all already been paid for through our training budget, and uh, they're finishing up that uh, this Wednesday. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of a busy time, but look, looking forward to it. So any, any questions that you might have, I'm willing to answer. What's your time frame on the coats? And um, last year, we did it past <coughs> Thanksgiving. So if, if the... Uh, if the citizens want to participate, and I know sometimes that can that can be a scary thing, but uh, you know we'll we'll take all the coats we can get because Mark also has a place at the schools that he can store them in the off season. So this year he was able to start giving coats away immediately when he saw kids coming to school when we did have some of the cold weather, 
and uh, especially before Thanksgiving, we'll we'll take we'll take whatever the public would want to bring. They can bring them by the police and fire headquarters, and uh, I can touch base with Sherry tomorrow and let her know that the barrel will be at the end of the hall. It's it's really not a not a real difficult process. So, okay, it's great great question. All right, thanks. Thank you. Congratulations on the hire. All right, promotion. Thank you. Excuse me. And to be clear, just because there are some jokes after the Fire Ops 101, the Jacob he's referring to is a different Jacob, just so we're all on the same page. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's Jacob Johnson. Thank you. <laughs> Street Department, actually, uh, Department of Public Works Director, uh, Wendell Walters. Good evening, Council. Uh, just some updates on the uh, activities around town. Hawk Signal Project. Uh, Everything underground is done. The base is installed. We were late waiting on delivery of the pole. Uh, it's supposed to be here the 21st. So the 21st, 22nd, we'll get it installed. Talked with Jacob and the police department. We might delay uh, activating that because of uh, the holidays. We need officers and myself and police captain to kind of monitor the area once we. Uh, Turn it on to make sure things working correctly traffic's paying attention people are paying attention so we'll let you know when that all comes about 16th Lindhurst project uh, we're looking at December 1st for total completion uh, we do have the concrete back in and the turn lanes all the underground stuff has been done they're working on curbs and sidewalks and driveway mm -hmm. approaches so uh, there might be some lane shifts that will happen in the future here that we can open up a lane so uh, depending on the weather, uh, December 1st is our target date. We are about uh, a month behind on that project due to utilities. So uh, weather stays with us, we should meet the December 1st project date. Uh, on the park side, uh, we are in the process of getting quotes for our 100 trees that have uh, went bad on us. Uh, thanks to Jacob's help, uh, we've got the information out. We should be receiving uh, those back Tuesday and Wednesday. Bring that to the town manager's attention for uh, approval to see if we can get uh, all those trees taken care of up there. So this will be a big push. We've identified 101 trees to be taken down. Uh, Mother Nature helped us get one tree down, so we have 100 left on our list. So uh, once we get this approved and move the crews in there, it'll be a busy area in there. What we're going to do is give them sections that we'll rope off, block off, so that they have a safe work area and our uh, residents still can use the park areas. There might be some areas around the playground at times that we'll have to, to rope off, close off, but uh, we'll get it all coordinated and make it all happen. And what's the rough cost of, of uh, the tree service that we're having to hire out? Uh, in the past, they've run from 700 to $1,500. And, and that's the per tree and that that will rate uh, on the size then the stump removal is average usually 175 to 250 dollars to do that work too so uh, uh well, we're, we're in the process of soliciting bids for that work so maybe we'll just yeah uh, let you know when uh, when those come in thank you all right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's a little tricky at times <laughs> we get the information out on the street Thank you, Jacob. Uh, and with Tim's report and stuff, uh, Main Street is going to be busy the next few weeks with the paving companies, the demo companies. We got trucks moving around uh, constantly, so everybody be careful. Uh, watch what's going on. Don't watch the destruction. Just be careful of the traffic because we do have heavy equipment moving around every place. So be patient. We'll get there. Uh, we've been through some major projects, and uh, everybody works well with us. So. Catches us up. Thanks. Thank Thanks you. Next up is uh, Mary Armacost from Hi. Uh, Waterworks. Um, everything's going just fine at the water plant. We um, promoted Luke Adams to distribution crew leader. It was a well deserved promotion. He is a very dedicated, hard working individual. And it was really, I appreciate you giving us the permission to promote him. Um, we have two individuals that are taking their water, surface water treatment operator class and hopefully will be passing their exams and getting their licenses um, in the next couple months. Um, we finished winterizing all of our wells. We're doing 
general um, winter maintenance on the surface water plant, have it all ready to go back, back online by spring. And that's really all we have for the water department. Any questions? Thanks for your report. Thank you. And next up is Norm Berry from Wastewater. Good evening again. Operational wise, the plant's uh, operating fine. We don't have any major issues at this time. Um, to give you an update on the leak that I reported uh, at the last meeting, the leak in the uh, one of the elevated tanks, uh, we are uh, in the process of getting that sealed up this week. We hired a contractor, and they'll be coming in and, and actually injecting epoxy into these cracks. Uh, we're not going to do a external type um, fix at this time uh, because we're hoping to uh, maybe do a more extensive repair uh, once we receive the grant. Um, Positive thinking like that. <laughs> I'd like to echo a little bit too about what Jim reported. I want to thank the police department and, and this is a very valuable service that they're providing over there. And it's not really a joke about flushing the pharmaceuticals, but there's a lot of science going on right now about uh, pharmaceuticals showing up in our drinking water, our storm water, and when these when these uh, materials are flushed into the sewer system, the treatment plant can't treat those, so they'll just pass right on through the treatment process, and they'll end up out in Big Eagle Creek and on downstream. So, so. There, like I said, there is a lot of science going on right now looking at um, what kind of harm maybe these ph pharmaceuticals are causing, not only to the drinking water, but uh, the environment um, and the wildlife. So please utilize the service. Um, I've been doing it myself. I've been sticking them in an old shopping bag, and once I got enough of them, I'm going to bring them over and and uh, uh, dedicate him to Jim. <laughs> I really, I, I really appreciate it. It's a very good service, so please utilize it. Yeah, I, just Norm, I'm in, in the medical business, and I we had uh, the same. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the the event is called uh, nationwide. Um, take back. Take back. Thank you. Um, the, the the chief explained earlier, and you're you're commenting on again. It. it is an enormous amount. The the tons that you described, it's like several herds of elephants. If you were to actually mass all of that, the amount of weight of the drugs just around the country, and people like Walgreens and CVS and some of those are all becoming active and doing the same thing because of the exact reasons uh, that you described. Um, not to mention the fact they're ending up in the hands of folks that they shouldn't be in that are actually either selling them or taking them or both, and. Uh, we, we hear every day of, of multiple overdoses and, and everything else. So it's a real issue. So thanks for, for making second comments sure. on that. Thank you. Lastly, um, please help out your street department. You know, we still are in the leaf, sec leaf uh, time. So uh, try to keep those drains in front of your house clear. We've got some rainstorms coming up, and uh, let's try to keep those streets moving. That's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Norm. Next up is Tammy Smith with Parks and Recreation. Welcome back. Thank you. Your second meeting. Yes, glad to be back. Just stay higher on. I'd like to start off today saying that our um, Speedway Youth Basketball League is in full swing. Um, things are going well with that. We have 109 registrants, so that's good, and it seems to be uh, going well at parent run this year. Um, so that's all I have on that one. Um, does anybody have any questions on the basketball <coughs> program? Okay. Next, um, I was going to mention about our tree program. Um, Wendell talked about the 100 trees that are going to be coming out. And um, Brian had done a video of me talking about um, our tree program that me as a over 23-year citizen of Speedway knew nothing about until I got into this position. And I was real excited about it. And it seems like it's fitting that this time is actually the best time to promote this program with those trees coming out. It's a great way to reforest. I've had great feedback. Today alone I got four phone calls. Um, since the video came out, I 
think Wednesday or Thursday of last week, I've had seven inquiries. Um, our, I've already sold some. Um, our planting is basically done for this season. Um, the last uh, two trees that were ordered will be planted this week. Then we're waiting on the plaques for them. Um, the next planting season will be in the spring, uh, weather permitting. So we still encourage people to do that. Um, and just let me know. One, one thing I want to mention on the trees. Um, these are not sap saplings. We're getting nicer trees that are two to three years old. So, um, you know, we have less problems with them. Yeah. Tammy, the other thing I was going to uh, comment on, because you and I had a chance to talk about this the other day, these aren't necessarily going back in the exact spot where these other trees are coming out. We're trying to be smart about where we place them. Uh, obviously, to some degree, there's a healthy part of Meadowood Park being thinned out. Right. And finding other spots for where trees need to go, and maybe even in a Leonard Park where or maybe even some other places where they might go. People can request a location. That doesn't necessarily mean they'll get that specific location, though, correct? Exactly, yeah. And, and mainly they can request which park it goes into. Um, but Meadowood is the one that we're going to need, you know, more trees in at some point. So it could be if too many people are asking to plant it in Leonard, we may have to cut that off. But um, we're not to that point yet. But anything else on the trees? And then um, I'd like to go on record to thank the police department as well. Both of my kids participated in that student academy, and I thought it was a wonderful program. I looked forward to them coming home every day. They just really talked it up, and I hope that that's something that's continued. I think it's great for our youth. And that's all I have. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks. <clears throat> uh, let's go ahead and move on. Thanks for all those reports, staff. Appreciate all the work you're doing. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the approval of claims, utility adjustments, and a re general report from our clerk treasurer. Thank you, Mr. Riggs. And Mr. President, oh, excuse me, sorry for that. Uh, the claims we have for you tonight <laughs> represent vouchers submitted from October 21st until November the 10th, last Friday. And um, business is normal, I would say, again, and we appreciate your approval. Mr. President, I move that we approve the claims presented to us by clerk treasurer. Second. We have a motion to approve the claims. Any comments from the public? Any from the council? All those in favor of approving the claims as, as uh, proposed, say aye. 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 Opposed? 4-0. Thank you. Uh, the utility adjustments are before you as well for the same time period, October 21st through November the 10th. And again, would appreciate your approval of those adjustments. Mr. President, I make a motion that we accept uh, the utility adjustments presented by Monty Combs, our clerk treasurer. Second. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Thanks for that motion. Very <laughs> specific motion. Uh, to approve the utility adjustments, any comments from the audience on, on that? Any from the council? All those in favor of approving the utility adjustments as presented by the clerk treasurer, Monty Combs, please uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? Those also carry 4-0. Monty, anything else to report this evening? Just quickly, uh, the State Board of Accounts is here for our annual visit, their annual visit to us, and they seem to stay most of the year, unfortunately, but they're here for the 2016 audit, and um, they say they should be done some around, sometime around Christmas, which is encouraging. Christmas. <laughs> so yeah. that's all I have. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, next up is our town manager. Do you have anything to report this evening? Thank you, Mr. President. Gary Rakes. Okay. All right. <laughs> I can adjourn any time now. <laughs> uh, uh, I do want to, to reiterate um, a little bit of what Wendell said with the uh, the Hawk system. So that's uh, the the system that's going to go into high school. Of course, the the uh, system at Cunningham has been uh, working really well, and. Uh, um, I think some warning tickets were issued when that first came out, just helping people understand how it works. Um, high school road is going to be a little more challenging. Um, there's a lot, obviously um, faster flow of traffic. It's a wider road, um, and uh, I think traveling that road is a lot more people from from out of town. Um, so for those that that are in town and and are aware of what's going on, would appreciate um, your help and support in uh, in following the rules there, of course, and, uh, and getting the word out as well as people 
um, who, who maybe make less effort to be informed just see it pop up and are wondering what, what's going on. So uh, the, the more we can get the word out on that light, the better. Um, it's going to help a lot of kids get to school safely as well as um, to the park, and um, it's, it's going to be uh, a really nice a really nice addition to that road, make it a lot safer. Um, I also want to talk about the, the ash program. or I, should, I call it the ash program because it's the ash trees that uh, are having the, the issue at Meadowood. But um, that's been a, a common question or concern that, that uh, has been brought to my attention, I'd say quite a bit over the past couple of months. Um, and uh, I think Wendell uh, and, and his team and Mike Smith have done a really good job of trying to um, pick out the trees that looked the worst, or the most risk of, of calling, f falling down or branches falling down. Um, and we've kind of chipped away at it with limited funds. and. Um, I just, I guess, want to also thank council for um, approving a budget that will uh, add a little more funds to that, and um, we're going to try to get it done in one swoop here this year because it's just um, as hard as they, they've worked to stretch dollars and, and make it work. Um, it's there's some trees that have been in really bad shape, and it's really accelerated, um, I think, over the past few years. So um, it's unfortunate, but. Uh, uh, Tammy was um, downplaying a little bit. She, she made a very nice video that went out um, talking about the tree program. So if you're interested in helping <coughs> place those trees, uh, please do reach out to her. Um, it's um, how much is it, Tammy? Uh, $250. $250. Uh, you get a little plaque that goes along with it. Um, so uh, if, if you're interested, or you don't have to have a plaque, you can just donate a, a tree, um, and we'll plant those. So highly encourage folks that are interested to do so. We've got a lot of trees to replace. Um, let's see. I think all I have left, um, I'll mention it is uh, Saturday, November 25th, the Small Business Day, of which we are fortunate to have several in our community. So uh, we're going to encourage folks to go out uh, after uh, Friday and, uh, and do a little bit of shopping locally. Um, support our local businesses. Uh, last but not least, I will begrudgingly congratulate Wabash College on winning the Monon Bell game this past weekend. Uh, and a lot of people say they just got really lucky with a few key DePaul errors. Um, you know, that might be true, but uh, they also made some gutsy calls down the line. So, who beat them? Um, who, who, who beat DePaul? Who beat DePaul? Yeah, well, the cavemen, Wabash, Wabash College cavemen. Uh, that's what they call us. So uh, but no, it was, it was a really good game, 22-21, but um, congrats to Wabash. That's all I've got. That really hurt, didn't it? A little bit. Okay. <laughs> One point. <laughs> All right. Hey, Thank Jacob, real quick, I have a question for you. On, yes. In regards to the um, walk for, um, or the signage for, this, for the students across High School Road, oh. and even really Cunningham, um, obviously there's, um, it's put in place for the um, individuals driving cars and such. What about the students? Because High School Road, I, I see more so there than Cunningham, mm -hmm. where they will dart across the street at any given time, because they're supposed to design to go down to 30th Street and cross over to go to the school. But that's a little bit of a distance. I understand that. So where, you know, is there something that's put in place with the schools and the kids making sure that they're crossing at the, at the walk sign? I'm not sure with the schools. I, I believe we're going to be working with the apartment complex because the apartment complex is sitting there. We'll be able to. Um, they, they've been working with the town on, on a number of different initiatives, but uh, to get the word out that hey, this is where you can cross, and it it really is the right location uh, for them to cross. It, it, it gets you about a straight shot in, whereas um, I think people are, are just crossing and darting across wherever because there isn't an alternative right now. Uh, so we'll be working with the apartment complex to get the word out because um, that is the, the majority, if not all, of the students that will be crossing. Um, but uh, knowing what I do about the schools and the relationship our police department has with them, I feel confident saying that, that they are probably working together to identify which kids will benefit and make sure that they are also being told in school, hey, this is where uh, you ought to cross safely. Okay. That's a good question, mm -hmm. for sure. Anything else? <coughs> Great. Thanks again for your report. Um, uh, any, uh, Bob Clutter, anything to report seating from uh, the legal position? Nothing from the legal position, but I do appreciate the new nameplate. Thank you very much for <laughs> you that. That's nice. Very nice. Uh, feel official now. <laughs> great. Uh, report from council members. I'll start to my left. David Lindsay. Um, 
Are you going to mention the school board? Yes. Okay. Nothing to report, sir. That's it. Mr. <laughs> President, <laughs> Gary Riggs. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Eileen Fisher. If you're going to mention school board, I have nothing to see. I have several things to mention. So, you, so someone <laughs> well, wants okay, to, then, then I'll just jump in. I'll just do. say that um, we have the list, obviously, of our all of our uh, commissions and boards. Um, it's coming up. It's that time of the year. So, if you're currently serving on a board um, <clears throat> and interested to um, be reappointed, please contact your counselor. If you're interested on serving and that you're currently not serving on, um, there's applications out <clears throat> on our website that you can complete. Um, and we'll be reaching out to the different people um, for that. We obviously cannot do <clears throat> what we do up here without the helps of the, our board members. So um, for all those who have been serving, thank you. Um, and all those who um, don't know that you're going to serve, thank you. But <laughs> 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 well, we need your help. <laughs> That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Jeffrey Matthews. I have uh, nothing this evening, Mr. President. Okay. Uh, just to tag on to what David uh, pointed towards and Eileen mentioned more specifically, uh, Terry Reed, who's been serving our town schools and our town for 22 years, has decided that um, he wants to keep serving but not necessarily on the school board. And he's been... Uh, recognized as one of the best school board members in the state of Indiana. Uh, literally, they've been awarded that, uh, that recognition. Um, I've heard from other people involved in the schools at administrative level, parent level, uh, at a school board level, that he is dedicated beyond what any member is. So those are huge shoes to fill. Uh, and really important shoes to fill because he's not going to uh, to be reappointed because he wants to step away from that position. He'll want to serve in other places in the town. So with that, as Eileen said, that's I wanted to be more specific about that position because it's not one that's come up for a while and uh, it is coming up in addition to the others. Um, wanted to uh, to tag on to Chief um, Campbell's uh, Citizens Academy graduation on Wednesday night. I participated in that. I know a couple of the other counselors have participated in the Citizens Academy. It is really informative. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, I get to run over some cones one night out in, in uh, Plainfield. Uh, I, I would rather have run over cones than to been, being accused of being a wimp by the police officers, so I decided to run over cones instead of going driving slowly. Um, but that's been a lot of fun. Uh, I missed the night uh, that we had an opportunity to learn about shooting weapons, so I'm going to make that up. But I uh, do appreciate the work that all of our police officers do. And I know our fire department, fire department has a similar academy, and I look forward to taking that at some point in time when I'm physically able. Um, like tonight, as Connie mentioned, is 12-7. Uh, look forward to Santa bringing um, or Santa Claus coming uh, on a two-seater with Sarah Fisher. The chamber is 11 th uh, 1130. I'll remind everybody of that one because it's important to raise funds for the chamber that puts on events in our town. Um, Veterans Day was this past weekend, and I want to thank the veterans of the, um, in our town, in particular those that uh, that I had a chance to see on Friday at the high school. Both our junior high and our high school uh, administrators, teachers, and students put on two tremendous, and I, I imagine our middle, our grade schools do something as well. I just am not informed of it. They put on two tremendous programs. Um, the one at the junior high, they recognize relatives. Uh, of the students. So those grandparents, parents, older siblings, aunts and uncles, neighbors, kids invite their veteran family members or really close friends to come to the junior high and then they recognize those veterans. Uh, it's, it's amazing to see uh, to be a, see that program. I wasn't at that this year at the junior high. I was instead at the high school in the afternoon on Friday. Um, I can't tell you how proud I was to attend that uh, and see our choir, our band perform um, the different uh, songs of the various branches of the military. Uh, both uh, they, 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 they sung music related to that. Uh, our students stood for the pledge. They sat down, heard a little more inf information and music, and then all of our students stood for the national anthem. There wasn't a question about it uh, as, as a person who absolutely respects veterans and those who actually paid their ultimate our ultimate price of losing their life to me it was fantastic to see uh, our students do uh, what they were encouraged to do they weren't required to do it they were just encouraged to do it uh, to respect especially uh, as they were paying tribute to veterans that day so I, I just
can't tell you how proud I am of, of the students and the administrators and the teachers that made that happen. Uh, it really moved me, and I was just glad to be a part of that, uh, or just be there and, and see it, actually. Um, the, uh, uh, I want to mention, that in addition to the school board uh, appointments, as Eileen said, there's the SRC, the arts, a variety of boards and commissions where we have spots open. And, um, and with that, I don't think there's... Uh, well, I, with this, you have with, something with else those positions, Please. I, I should have, I guess I should have spoke. Um, if you are interested in the school board of those positions, apply sooner rather yes. than later yeah. for us, please. Uh, we don't need to wait to the last minute until we have names for that. And, uh, yeah. Because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of in interest, or I hope there is. Yeah. So. Yes, there has. And there has been interest in the past. We've uh, we've interviewed uh, candidates, talked to candidates at times. I'm not sure exactly what the process will follow, but uh, it's a really good point. The earlier, the better. Um, any last comments? Anything that we missed? Great. So um, I, th I would like to thank, um, we have two engineering companies that attended tonight's meeting, and one of them got up and actually set the time back on the clock in the back <laughs> of the room, and the other one supervised. So I wanted to thank those guys for uh, for making that happen for us. Um, just make sure, let's make sure that's not on the claims. Next yeah. Time. It, yeah, so we want to make sure we don't get billed for that. But uh, what's funny is it says 806 on my phone, but it's 805 on the clock, so they were pretty close. Uh, <laughs> but we thank them for their efforts. And at this time, we'll call the meeting adjourned.